The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Bezier Games. Whistle Stop from Bezier Games is a train game where you're going to be laying tiles in order to move your train from the east coast to the west coast. You're going to be using coal and whistles in order to move your train where you're going to be stopping along the way to gather resources, maybe get some upgrades, maybe collect some stocks. So a lot of different things going on. So let me show you kind of how to play the game and then let's see what dad and his group thinks as Whistle Stop is our game of the week. I have the game set up for four players and I'm not going to go into what each of these tiles do, but I will talk about how you set this up at the moment. Uh, there are 10 of these end tiles and we are going to shuffle those up and we will place eight of them on the board here. Now you'll know they're different from the regular tiles because they have these dark green backs. The other tiles have this light green back, so they're easy to distinguish which tiles are which. We will place uh, coal on our track here and this is our timer for the game. Uh, the rules say to place two coal per player. Now, since I have this set up for four, I'm starting with this four spot, but we found that instead of having stacks of coal here, because that would be eight coal on each one of those, if they get knocked over, they get messy. We just put one coal there and we designate one person the coal baron. And what they do is when a new round begins, they take that coal off of the track and then they give everybody else two coal uh, per turn. Now, You'll notice that all these spots have coal, except for this one down here towards the end, it has a whistle. And the same with that, you're gonna have one whistle per player. The middle has various towns that we can stop in, plus three regular tiles, and I'll talk about those as well. But when you set this up, you need to have at least one trading post, one coal yard, and two town um, tiles. And then you pick another special tile, uh, in this case, we have the Whistle Factory, and then three regular tiles. Finally, on our East Coast over here, we have all regular tiles in those slots. The game comes with a bunch of these upgrade tiles that we're gonna be able to have the opportunity to uh, basically purchase with resources. What we're gonna do is we are going to put out at least the, uh, one for each player. So in a four player game, we would put out four and then we add two other ones. So you can see that we have a bunch of uh, leftover ones that we're not gonna use. So that's gonna add to the variability in playing the game. We have gold tokens up here and these are going to be obtained by going to the gold yards or uh, there is an upgrade that allows you to get these, but these are going to, when you take these, they're gonna be uh, taken by that player, they're going to be kept face down, although the player that takes it can see what the number is on the bottom. These are worth victory points at the end of the game. They're worth from three, four, or five points. To start the game, each player is going to get one whistle. They will get three of the ordinary tiles. They're gonna draw these, and they have to make sure they have at least one stop on one tile. So where you see these resource cubes, those are considered stops. So those three are all good. We are also going to get a number of trains based on the number of players. In a four player game, each player is going to get four trains in their color. And then finally, each player will get a player board in their color. Uh, we will see we have four action spots here. So when we uh, use coal or whistles, we'll place one on each of those spots to show which actions uh, we've done. And then it tells you down here to make sure to refill your hand two, three, and just in case that you've played a tile on your hand. We also have spots here. There's three spots for those upgrade tiles that I was just talking about. So you'll see that those have nice little cogs on those so they fit in there, but don't get too attached to those because other players can steal these by paying the resources that you did plus one of the other rare goods. On the back of the player board, it gives you your scoring breakdown and tells you what you're going to do for ties. The object of the game basically is to move your trains from the east coast all the way across the board to the west coast. So in reverse player order, and you randomly pick who's going to go first, but uh, in reverse player order, starting with the last player, they are going to take their train, whoops, upside down there, 
they're going to take their train and they are going to put it on one of these spots uh, that you see over here. So it can be anywhere they want. And so players will just start placing their own trains. And once all players have done it, then you just you keep going until all trains have been placed. You'll notice that there are 16 spots. So that works out perfectly in a four player game. And that's how everybody gets their train set up. On the side of the board, we have various stocks and I'll show you what one of those looks like. They're numbered from one to six. And when you stop at towns, you're gonna get whatever stock that town is offering. And you wanna try to have the lowest number of stock because in a tiebreaker, say if we all have three of these USA Freight stocks, whoever has that lowest number is gonna win that tiebreaker. So you can see that these towns here, this town, uh, has the blue stock and this town has the um, teal stock. The blue stocks are worth 10 points. Uh, these teal stocks are worth seven. And I've arranged these in order of uh, points. The red stocks are also worth seven and then the gray and the yellow are worth five points. So that's kind of a nice thing to have because if you're playing with, with people who either haven't played the game in a long time or have never played, uh, putting them in this order allows them to realize, hey, what are the more important stocks or, or the stocks that are worth more money? So I was telling you during setup that we use these special tiles. Now, the game comes with a bunch of these, and you can see there's a general store. There's another town that has the red stock. There's another one that's got yellow. Here's one that is a whistle factory, which when you stop there, you're going to gain a whistle. Uh, so you can see all those. There's plenty of these. Here's that uh, gold mine tile, um, how you get those gold nuggets. But these that are not used in the setup are going to get shuffled in with the regular tiles. And you'll see that they have the regular light green back on those. And players will be able to draw those as they're playing other tiles to refill their hand. So as they're filling out the board, those won't just appear here in the center. They could be anywhere else. Based on your starting position, each player is going to start with a certain number of coal to begin the game. Uh, if you are the first player, you are only going to start with two. If you're the second player, you're only going to get two. Third player will get three, and the fourth player will get three. In a five-player game, that player will get uh, four coal. So on a player's turn, they're going to be able to do one of two different things. They can spend up to four tokens, either coal or whistles, and that's where... Uh, those action spots come into play on their player board. Or they can uh, also spend resources to gain two of these upgrades if they have those resources. You can do all of them, you can do none of them, you can do a combination of them, uh, whatever it is, but you can take basically up to four actions and get two of the upgrades. So uh, let me show you how the movement works. You see our player board here. One coal will allow you to move up to one stop forward. So I would place that on the first action spot on my board. And then I would look at one of my trains and figure out which one that I wanted to move. I could move this green one following the track would put me at this blue stop. But you'll notice that that's a loop. So I may not want to go there just yet. This one here will actually move along. And then what I would do is I would look at my hand of tiles and figure out which tile that I wanted to place there if I wanted to do that. So I could do that or I could look at my other train down here. This train would be able to stop and collect a green resource. This one, however, would be able to get a white resource and then also be able to move on to the trading post. So let's just say that I wanted to do that with this train. So I move him there. That is a stop. Then I would collect one white resource. So I'm going to keep playing on my turn based on the number of actions I want to take, up to four. So since I took that one, I still have up to three actions that I could take if I wanted to. Um, so let's say that I wanted to move this train and keep him moving along, and I wanted to play uh, a resource from my hand. And let's just say I decided that I wanted to play this tile. So this train actually would follow that track and it's gonna to go to this open space. I can orient this tile any way that I want. Uh, so let's just say that I wanna put it like this. So as I have my train follow it, he is going to stop on the brown 
and I will get a brown resource. So that is two of my actions. Now, with my whistle, I can do a couple of different things because on the using coal, you can only move forward. And you'll notice the game basically is going to be set up in groups of columns here. So here's a column. This is the start of another column. Here's another column there and so on. So when you use the coal, you cannot go backwards uh, a column. So if I'm here on a future turn, I could not spend a coal and go back a space like that. With whistles, you can. Whistles will allow you to do a certain number of things. Uh, first off, you can jump over other trains because let's just say that there was this train here and I wanted to keep going on there. I could actually spend a whistle and jump over the top of him and place another tile from my hand right there. So that's one use for the whistle. If I wanted to, I could skip over a stop and actually place another tile and go two stops. So let's just say that I decided to place this tile here and instead of collecting that resource, uh, let's say that I put this tile like that. So instead of stopping on the brown, I could have spent a whistle and skipped the brown and then collected a white resource there. The other thing that the whistles will allow you to do, like I said, is, it, is to go backwards. So if I was here and I really wanted to, to go and collect that brown resource because let's say another train was there and it, he's since moved on, but I want that, then I can use that whistle and I can actually move backward a column. So then once I have used all the actions that I wish on my board, then these go back into the supply and my board is clear. Play resumes to the next player in clockwise order. One thing I forgot to mention during setup, you're going to have three tiles uh, that are, you're just going to draw off of the top of the stack of unused tiles uh, and place them face down. And at the end of my turn, my player board will remind me that I need to draw back up to three tiles in my hand. And since I spent two tiles on that turn, I need to draw back up to three. Now I can do that in a couple of ways. I can either take from the face up display. Now let's just say I decide I wanted to, to take this one. I could then take another tile here, or I could just draw blind off the top and put that in my hand, just as long as I draw back up to three. Then since I took a tile here, I'll replace that and we're ready for the next player. I mentioned that when I am at this stop, no other train can actually occupy that same spot. They can use a whistle to jump over me. However, once we get to one of these special tiles, not these three that are the regulars, but uh, so like the whistle factory here or the coal yard, other trains can actually occupy that as well. So there's no blocking once you get to these spots here. Now, an important thing to mention is that you can always move along the same uh, column that you're already in using coal. So let's just say that I was at this whistle factory. I could actually spend uh, a coal and move all the way up to here to this gray because there's no stops on this uh, tile here, and that would be the next stop, and then I could continue on. Uh, I could also go back this way and continue uh, moving along and going to some of those as well. So that's a way that once you get to the middle, even if your train started all the way down here at, at one end, uh, you could use this to move your train and basically try to go for wherever you want to go. Which leads me into our uh, end tiles here. So let's just say that this was filled out and just throw some tiles in here. Because this will all fill in while other players are taking their turns. You got to match up the trains, or the uh, tracks here. Let's see if I've done this right. And sometimes these get a little tight. So you can see now I have a direct line all the way over to this end tile here. Now I have a number of stops between there. So let's just say that on my turns, I've just gone through, I followed this train and I get to here. Now you'll notice that this requires a gray, a white, and a brown resource. If I pay those, I'll get 10 points and I'll move my marker on the scoring track. If I cannot pay that, then down at the bottom, it shows you how many points you'll lose. In this case, I would actually, instead of getting 10 points, I would lose three points. However, now that my train is all the way over here on the West Coast, there, 
there's a section of the board up here where I can place this train and now gain resources. So they give me, in this case, two whistles and any other resource of my choice, uh, a coal and a whistle and a resource of my choice. When you get down to here, it actually specifies what those resources are. So here's a red cube, a coal and a whistle, blue cube, coal and a whistle, and so forth. Uh, but you'll place your train and it will stay there and not move for the rest of the game. Now, I had mentioned about the negative points there. Whenever you stop at any of these city tiles and you cannot pay the cost. So in this case, if I paid a blue and a gray, I would get seven points and I would also get the topmost stock on the coast to coast stack. Uh, if I could not pay those, I would not get the, the uh, stock and I would lose two points, but I would be able to, to stop there. Now, if I use a whistle to actually jump over that, um, so let's just say that we had, you know, an incoming train that was like this. Say he was on the gray and he, for whatever reason, decided to go here. Don't know why he would, but just humor me in case he did. He followed the train there. He could pay a whistle and then he could play another tile and instead of stopping there. So let's just say he decided to play this. He could skip this, not lose the two points and then stop at that brown spot. So play is gonna continue. You're gonna fill up the board basically. And then the game will end either when we run out of uh, the track here. So when we take this last one, we'll do that last turn and then we'll count up our points. Or if one player gets all of their trains up into uh, the West Coast here and has placed them on these spots, then every player will get one last turn um, to finish that round. Add up your points and find out who the winner is. So now that I've showed you on a high level on how to play the game, let's get to what dad's group and dad thinks. Whistle Stop has probably been one of the hits of 2017 and with my game group, it's no exception. We have really enjoyed playing this. Uh, we've played this several times. Uh, I think we've always played with at least four players and we've played with five. I've not played uh, the two or three player game, but uh, everyone has really enjoyed playing this. The game time still takes about an uh, hour, say hour and a half, so that's not too bad. The box says that it should take about 75 minutes, so that's probably a little low, although once, I guess, you uh, are very familiar with the game, you might be able to, to play a little faster. Uh, it is a little AP prone um, because the map does change. You may have an idea, oh, I, you know, I'm really wanting to place a tile there and do something, but somebody else does it uh, and messes up plans, so people have to rethink. So there's the AP thing. There is also downtime, uh, and it can be quite a bit, uh, between your plays. Uh, we have noticed that in our group, uh, guys have gotten up and, you know, went and got a drink or whatever. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And that's going to depend on who you're playing with. If you've got somebody when it's their turn, if they're not really prepared, they don't know what they're going to do because like I said, somebody maybe, uh, put a tile where they were planning to, um, they may take a little longer in trying to figure their move out. Uh, but essentially it comes down to, you know, what resources are you trying to get? Sometimes you're looking to see exactly where you can move your train. Um, because when you're looking at the tracks and you kind of see, you know, kind of a big mess, you got to try to follow, okay, that train goes to here, not to over here. Um, we've had that happen a couple times, but that's really not that big of a deal. The replayability factor I think is very high. The fact that it is a tile lane game means that no two games are going to be the same. Uh, like I said, you've got 10 tiles for the end game or the, uh, the end over here scoring, and you're only going to use eight. So, you know, two of those are always going to be out of the game. You have a random setup on what is actually going to be in the center column with the exception of the, uh, you know, you're going to have at least a coal factory and a trading post but you don't know what cities are gonna come up and then you're gonna have three other tiles. So when you shuffle those, you're not really gonna know how those are gonna play out there. Um, and then the placement over here at the beginning of the game. This can be crucial. Uh, we played a game the other night where I was actually first player. I was all the way over here on this end and uh, short-sightedness on my part, I played a tile here that resulted in a big loop 
and I was not even able to get back. I could get back to my starting spot, but I was essentially stuck. And the fact that I was stuck there actually made everybody else stuck. Um, so that is one of the things that you can do. You can you know, try to block people. If they don't have a whistle, they're not going to be able to jump over you. Or you can make them uh, spend a whistle to try to jump over you. Uh, there's a number of different strategies that you can use. I've seen people bounce back and forth between the center areas and collect a bunch of stocks, get stock up on the resources like the coal and the whistles. Or I've also seen people try to basically blow through and try to be, uh, you know, play kind of a speed game where they're trying to get their trains over here and try to get uh, over as fast as possible. Um, so there's a number of different strategies that you can employ. Uh, so we've all liked that as well. Uh, the negatives. So the production quality on the game, as far as the tiles go, uh, and the, the trains and the resources, those are fine. Uh, the negatives really come in on the color choices. The trains are all kind of these pastel colors, uh, or pastel colors, I mean. Um, and they're just, you know, I think it would have been nicer to have these as more vibrant colors. I don't know what the choice was to, was it to try to distinguish itself from, you know, the games like Ticket to Ride, which do use the vibrant colors, but um, there are some yellow trains that they just, they kind of look washed out. Actually, everything looks washed out as far as the trains go. So that was kind of a negative. It doesn't impact the, the gameplay one bit, so that's not an issue. Uh, it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, we would have liked to seen that done a little bit better. The board fits together kind of like a puzzle. You'll see it kind of has this puzzle piece and it just, it slots in. Uh, not really sure why they decided to go that route. That's not a big issue either. Uh, but I think I would have liked to had a, just kind of an outline of the board instead of trying to, to place this together. It could be to try to allow for more wiggle room when you're trying to place tiles. The tiles for the most part fit in fairly well, uh, in all the various spots. So that really hasn't been too much of an issue at all. But overall, we've really enjoyed the game. The gameplay moves, like I said, fairly quickly, unless you've got some AP folks. You've got your nice tracker over here, so you know exactly how many turns that you're gonna have left. Um, you know what kind of resources you're gonna get because at the beginning of each turn, you know you're gonna get at least two coal, so you can always do something. If you can't do something, then I think if you don't move any trains and you just say, hey, I'm passing my turn, you get a whistle, so, uh, Kind of a wasted turn, but you are getting a whistle. Those are generally hard to come by uh, unless you can get to a whistle factory. Uh, the other thing with scoring the points uh, that I didn't mention is if you get caught with a special tile in your hand, you actually lose 10 points. And those special tiles, uh, like I said, are like these city tiles. You can grab these here. So if I would have gotten had this tile in my hand at the end of the game, I would have lost 10 points. The other way that you can get some points is these upgrades. And this is another part of the replayability. I showed you at the beginning how many different uh, upgrade tiles there are, and you're only using you know, a certain number in the game. But um, these will show you how many victory points you'll get at the end if you have possession of that upgrade tile. Uh, so, so that's really nice. There's just a ton of ways that these games, each game that you play is not gonna be the same uh, or feel the same as the one that you played, you know, the last time. But everything else is very good. Uh, it's been very popular. We've, like I said, we've played this several times. I know this sold out, I think, at Origins and at Gen Con. I think Origins was the first place that they actually had it. They might have only been demoing it there. But I do know they sold out at Gen Con. So it's been very popular. Uh, if you like games like Ticket to Ride uh, or train games in general, I highly recommend this. The learning curve on this is not uh, not bad at all. Uh, and I think once you get actually a couple of moves under your belt, then everything is pretty much gonna fall into place. So I, I think it's an easy to learn, it's fairly easy to teach. The rule book is laid out fairly well. It shows you what each of the tiles do. And then it shows you on the, the back here, what each of the upgrades do. So uh, you can always use this as a reference guide, and we have 
just because we, we don't remember from play to play uh, what some of the upgrades do. But uh, for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory. So that is Whistle Stop. Highly recommend it. And we will catch you guys next time. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.